गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इंटीग्रेटर्स अंडर द टॉपिक आई एयर फिल्टर्स आई फॉरगॉट दिस टॉपिक आई थॉट ऑन दिस आवर आई एयर फिल्टर डिजाइनिंग इट वाज ओवर हाउवर आई फाउंड दैट दिस इंटीग्रेटर इज लेफ्ट सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इट टुडे ओके सो दिस टॉपिक आई विल बी कवरिंग Uh, through biomedical digital signal processing by wj tomkins okay so uh, integrators uh, the ir uh, filters uh, they are being used mainly for design the designing the integrators and these integrators are quite commonly used in biomedical uh, signal processing okay in the first case we have rectangular integration in the rectangular integration we have y of nt is equal to y of nt minus t plus capital t x of nt okay then uh, if we perform z transform from uh, this difference equation we get yz equals to yz into z inverse plus t of xz okay and by rearranging this we get Xz is equal to t multiplied by one by z uh, one by no one minus z inverse. Okay. So this is the transfer function of a rectangular integrator. Now, if you try to find out the modulus of Xz, we get modulus of t by two sine omega t by two, and the phase response of this uh, transfer function of the rectangular integrator. is omega t by 2 minus of pi by 2 okay now if you look over here <clears throat> if you have the time axis and the output uh, values over here uh, so suppose these are the inputs you have this input uh, um, uh, first input uh, and then the present input is this one n of t and uh, the previous one is nt minus uh, t so we are taking these two values and then we are trying to find out the integration what is integration basically integration means uh, it helps us in calculating the area under the curve okay integration it helps us in calculating the area under the curve so uh, we have a point over here we have a point over here now if you try to find out the integration rectangular integration what it does it just takes a common rectangular area uh, between the two points and it calculates that value okay <clears throat> if you see there is a region over here uh, which is been marked in green this area is not covered Now, uh, since this area is not covered, uh, that means the rectangular integration it uh, provides us with some results which is not the actual area under the curve, okay, uh, between the two points, right? So this is one of the disadvantage of the rectangular integration. However, the calculation of the area under the curve. using the rectangular integration is very fast okay so if we need any uh, processing where we need a fast area under the curve or we need to do uh, the integration very quickly then this rectangular integration uh, is preferred okay because it is uh, time efficient in nature okay now if you want to find out the pole zero plot so it has a pole at z equals to 1 and a zero at z equals to 0 okay now this kind of um, uh, what you call filter analysis we have previously done and we have seen that uh, when we are having a pole at dc frequency so at dc it will give you an infinite gain 
and uh, then uh, as you come to uh, this uh, pi uh, radians over there since there is no zero over there so what happens there is a residual uh, amplitude which is left in this region okay so this is the pole zero plot of the rectangular integrator okay so we have a zero at origin and pole at z equals to 1 now comes to the uh, this realization of the filter so i found there is a mistake over here so this z would not be there okay so i drew it from a book uh, from the uh, wj tomkins so you have the xz then it gets multiplied with t okay now this is getting added up with the output which has been delayed okay the output which has been delayed so so please uh, uh, keep in mind that this z inverse term it would not be there okay so the rest of the things uh, it uh, appears to be the same so let me draw it uh, clearly Okay, so this will be your uh, structure realization of the rectangular integrator. Okay, then we have trapezoidal integrator. In the trapezoidal integrator, the equation is if you see the rectangular integrator equation. and compare it with the trapezoidal integrator if you see the first two terms y of nt minus t plus tx nt minus t so uh, this looks somewhat similar okay right then in addition to that we have t by 2 x of nt minus x of nt minus t okay so what happens over here if you uh, of just uh, simplify this we get y of nt minus t plus t by 2 x of nt plus x of nt minus t okay so if you see this t of x of nt uh, it, there is some modulation over here um, so um, over here we are having twice the value however here in this case in trapezoidal integration we have t by 2 x of uh, nt okay but however we have another term t by 2 x of nt minus t okay so what it does what is the physical significance of this one if you look into this plot if you take the same thing so we have seen now two regions one is a rectangular region and there is another triangular region okay so it is covering 
a larger amount of area under the curve under this two point and it is returning that value however still if you see that in the green region in between this straight line and the dotted line there is some region which is not occupied while you calculate the area under the curve or integrate the points using the trapezoidal integrator circuit okay now what happens over here is that as compared to the uh, rectangular integrator as compared to the rectangular integrator the trapezoidal integrator it is having uh, a, uh, it is having an error which is lesser as uh, compared to the rectangular integrator values however if you look into the values the complexity of the computation will increase okay the complexity of the calculation it will increase okay now from here if you perform z transform you get to this equation where we have h of z it is equals to t by 2 1 plus z inverse divided by 1 minus z inverse okay now for h of omega t we have t by 2 1 plus e to the power minus j omega t divided by 1 minus e to the power minus j omega t okay this kind of analysis we have previously uh, done so from here i will take e to the power minus j omega t by 2 as common and we get e to the power j omega t by 2 plus e to the power minus j omega t by 2 divided by e to the power j omega t by 2 minus e to the power minus j omega t by 2 multiplied by t by 2. Okay. So this term gets cancels out and over here the uh, numerator term it comes out to be 2 cos omega t by 2 and the denominator term it comes out to be 2 j sin omega t by 2 then multiplied by t by 2. So here we get minus of j cot omega t by 2 multiplied by t by 2. So if you try to get the modulus of h omega t, you get modulus of cot of omega t by 2 multiplied by t by 2. Okay. And the phase of the trapezoidal integrator, it comes out to be minus of pi by 2. Now, if you look into the pole 0 plot, it has a 0 and z is equal to minus of 1 and a pole at z equals to 1 okay so what happens over here is that if you look into the previous case we were having some um, high frequency components which are getting uh, into the output signal however when you talk about the trapezoidal integrator we have a zero at pi or z equals to minus of one due to this reason the high frequency noises they are suppressed when you use trapezoidal integrator however as i previously said there is still there are still some uh, minute areas which are not being covered by the trapezoidal integrator this is one of the disadvantages of the trapezoidal integrator okay so if you look into this um, uh, what you call the defense equation we can write it down in this fashion y of z is equal to y of z multiplied by z inverse plus t by 2 xz xz z inverse right 
right so this is y of z uh, z inverse so we have y of z z inverse plus t by 2 xz we have xz plus xz z inverse xz z inverse okay so if you see all this xz terms they are by multiplied with t by 2 so we can write it down uh, sorry we can draw it in this fashion xz then it is getting multiplied by t by 2 then we are having that it is going to an adder okay and from here this t by 2 terms xz into t by 2 it is getting delayed it is getting added up over here and from here we get yz now this yz is again delayed and it comes to the adder okay so this is the realization of the uh, this uh, trapezoidal integrated circuit okay now our next Uh, type of integrator is simpson's rule integrator uh, which basically employs a polynomial integration now if over here if you see the simpson's rule integration it is given by y of nt is equal to y of nt minus 2t plus t by 3 x of nt plus of 4 of x nt minus t um, plus x of nt minus 2t okay so if you perform the z transform we get hz is equal to t by 3 1 plus 4z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 divided by 1 minus z to the power minus 2 okay now from here if you solve this we get modulus of h of uh, omega t it is equal to t by 2 modulus of t by 2 multiplied by 2 plus cos omega t divided by sin omega t and the phase of this system is given by Minus of pi by two. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if you look over here, when we are trying to calculate the integral value or the area under the curve, in this case, we need three points, and these three points are being joined by a polynomial function. Okay, the function which is joining all these three point is a polynomial function okay the main advantage over here is that all the points over here they are getting covered up and all the area is accounted for okay so the area under the curve what you will be getting over here it is uh, an accurate value however if you look into the pole zero plot it is having two poles at z is equal to minus 1 and 1 and it has two zeros at z is equal to minus 3.73 and minus 0.27 okay <clears throat> so i am not concerned about the zeros at this moment 
so what i am concerned with i am concerned with the poles if you see there are two poles at uh, zero radians and pi radians and since there is a pole at pi radians over here the high frequency components they are being amplified by this uh, simpson's rule integrator okay so what happens over here is that due to the uh, high frequency component the magnification if there are any high frequency noises within the signals they will be amplified and uh, this is one of the disadvantage of the simpson's rule integrator that the uh, high frequency noises will be amplified in that case okay if you use the simpson's rule integrator however if you look into the area under the curve you will be getting an exact area under the curve uh, values okay so it has its own advantages and uh, advantage and disadvantage okay now if you look in uh, if we look into the uh, realization of this filter we can write it down in this fashion y of nt that means it is equal to y of z it is equal to yz multiplied by z to the power minus 2 plus t by 3 xz plus 4 xz into z to the power minus 1 plus xz into z to the power minus 2 okay <clears throat> now in this case uh, we will be having xz then it gets multiplied by 3 by uh, t by 3 then it gets to an adder z inverse it gets multiplied with 4 So then we have yz z to the minus 2 So this is our uh, implementation of the direct form 1 implementation uh, of the <coughs> uh, Simpson's rule integrator. Okay. So these are the three types of integrators uh, which uh, we can have, um, right? So and they are these integrators they are very easily. Uh, 
uh, they are very commonly used not easily they are very commonly used in biomedical applications okay then our next topic is design method for two pole uh, two pole filters design methods for two pole filters okay uh, we have discussed a lot of filtering techniques uh, till now excuse me so what happens over there is that all the methods what we have discussed they are quite cumbersome okay now if you have to design a filter quick filter uh, and it is it has uh, two poles that means if you want to design a uh, second order filter which is quite common while you try to design iir filters because as you go on increasing the uh, what you call uh, you go on increasing the uh, order of the filter there are uh, certain uh, problems with the uh, iir filters because there will be an increase in the, the number of the delays okay if you look into the number of the delays in a uh, two pole filter you are having almost four delays whereas in the fir filter you would be having only two delays okay so if you increase one more delay actually what you are doing you are uh, delaying or you are introducing two more delays and these are quite understandable while we see the filter response um, if we go into the signal so <clears throat> if you go for higher order filters then the time taken by the filter to get stabilized before you can collect uh, some good quality data it increases okay so this if you increase the uh, what you call, uh, the order of the filter it increases the fil uh, it increases the time of the filter to get stabilized output okay so how it is achieved it is achieved using this generalized equation in this equation what you do you have h of z which is equal to 1 plus a1 z inverse plus a2 z to the power z to the power minus 2 divided by 1 minus of b1 z inverse plus b2 z to the power minus 2 now in this case our zero locations they are placed uh, they are present at z is equal to minus of a1 plus minus under root of a1 square minus of 4a2 divided by 2 okay and for pole locations we have z is equal to b1 plus minus under root of b1 square plus 4 of b2 divided by 2 okay now here b1 is given by 2 r cos theta and b2 is given by r square okay and theta it is given by 2 pi fc by fs that means theta should be in radians okay now what is this r r is the distance of the pole from the origin and theta is the at what angular distance this pole is present okay till now please remember till now we had been discussing about the, uh, the, basically this r gives you an information about the radial position okay till now we have been discussing about the distance of the pole to the frequency axis but here the r is basically the radius or the distance of the pole from the origin we are not finding out the frequency response of the filter over here we are trying to locate or design a filter where 
we will be having the uh, where we will be putting the pole so we are basically calculating the position of the filter uh, position of the pole so here we are not talking about the distance of the pole to the frequency we are talking about the distance of the pole from the origin please keep this in mind and theta is the angle angular uh, uh, position of the pole okay so it may be 45 degree so if you have 45 your cutoff uh, will would be 45 we have already discussed how to find out the cutoff frequency divided by fs whatever is the fs so it will be converting it to radians okay so this is an important step so as soon as you are asked to design a filter ir filter using two pole filter method then what are the steps first you have to choose the sampling frequency and the sampling frequency should be such that that it follows the nyquist criteria that means sampling frequency should be greater than equal to 2 of fm okay right then next we will be choosing critical frequency for high pass filter and low pass filter okay on the contrary if it is a band pass filter or band reject filter we have to choose the resonant frequency okay then the third step is select r so it is the distance of the poles from the origin it is the distance of the poles from the origin and r is given by r to the power uh, r equals to e to the power minus alpha t okay where r is equal to 1 that means your poles are present on the frequency axis your alpha it comes uh, becomes the zero that means it is the distance between the pole and the frequency uh, point so that is called under damping that means under damping means <clears throat> the oscillations or the amplitude will be higher when our r is near to 1 it is tending to 1 on the contrary when r is near to 0 it is called over damping that means the effect of the pole it is getting minimized under damping means there is no damping at all okay it is a damping means suppression and under damping means there is minimal damping or negligible damping whereas over damping means damping means suppression over damping uh, means it is being damped to a greater extent okay so it is quite understandable uh, when we have discussed the uh, designing of the uh, filters using poles and zeros we have discussed when a pole is placed onto the frequency axis it is having the maximum amplitude response and when it is near to the zero we will be having almost no effect of the pole or uh, equal effect of the pole on all the frequency components okay so depending upon where you want to place the poles you have to select the r component okay so first is sampling frequency then critical or no frequency or the resonant frequency then you fix up the positions of the poles then at last you will be choosing the value of a1 and a2 to determine the locations of the zeros now it is quite easy for low pass filter the a1 and a2 is 2 and 1 for band pass filter 0 and minus 1 for high pass filter minus 2 and 1 and for band reject filter it is 2 cos theta and 1 okay so uh, if you see in the step c while you are cho choosing this r basically you are allowing or you are calculating 
you using that that r values you are calculating b1 and b2 values okay so for the calculation of the pole location uh, the uh, what type of filter it is you need to know and its corresponding r values you need to know whereas for zero locations the values of a1 and a2 they are fixed okay they are fixed now once you have done this then you can uh, design any filter and then you realize this filter this is the generalized realized structure of the uh, two pole filters you just have to calculate the values of a1 and a2 and minus of b1 and b2 and just put the values over here and that's it and you are good to go so if you are asked that you design a low pass filter whose critical frequency is at um, pi by 4 radians okay so what you will be doing first you will be calculating the fs you will be calculating the fc okay accordingly and this theta is already given to you in this form pi by 4 okay so what is the critical frequency if it is a low pass filter you will be having the critical frequency so the critical frequency is pi by 4 then uh, you have to choose the r say if you choose it as 0.9 okay you choose it as 0.9 then uh, you have uh, this thing uh, you put this 0.9 in this equation okay and theta value you are having you will be putting the theta value to this cos theta ea so cos of pi by 4 you have to calculate and then you have to choose a1 and a2 for low pass filter you have a1 and a2 value of 2 and 1 you will put these values in zero locations you will be calculating that and uh, you will be finding out um, the transfer function over here you have got the transfer function and then from there you will be realizing the filter okay so if i say that uh, find out uh, uh, suppose you are given Uh, you are given with a um, uh, signal which is having a cut off frequency uh, which is having a maximum frequency f of m is equal to 100 hertz okay so what should be the sampling frequency sampling frequency should be at least 2000 hertz and i tell you that uh, you find out Uh, you have to uh, design a filter having a cut off frequency of low pass filter having a cut off frequency of say 45 hertz so how the theta will be calculated theta will be calculated 2 pi 45 by 200 now remember over here i have said fm is 100 hertz now i have assumed fs equals to 200 hertz you may take it as 300 hertz 400 hertz 500 hertz it all depends on you okay so from here you will be getting the theta value and then that theta value you will be using it uh, to calculate the b1 value and r whether you want a very strong effect then r should be nearly equal to 1 say 0.9 and if you want a feeble effect at that location uh, then it may be say either 0.5 or even lower right <clears throat> and again since it is a low pass filter 2 and 1 and then you calculate these values and you just uh, get it okay if it is a high pass filter then you have to go for 
the calculation of a1 and a2 from this third row hypersolated equals to minus 2 and 1 the calculation of b it remains the same okay so do you have any questions hello so how do you find the resonant frequency Resonant frequency is basically the you can say that the central frequency where the uh, you will be having a maximum value. Suppose I uh, tell you that, uh, or you can say that uh, central frequency also band reject filter. Uh, say uh, say for example, I want to uh, suppress 50 hertz signal, 50 hertz uh, noise component, okay, power line com uh, component then uh, i know that sampling frequency is 200 hertz so i will be calculating it as theta equals to 2 pi 50 by 200 okay now suppose for bandpass filter you want to calculate that one then uh, say you will be having fl you will be having fh so you can calculate fl by fh by 2 this would be the central frequency. So where your F, um, effect will be highest. So say this is FL. This is FH. So the average of this two, you can take it as uh, FR, the resonant frequency. Okay, Resonance means the effect will be higher at that location. This is for the band pass filter and for band reject filter. Similarly, you will be uh, having this thing. So this is FL. Here you will be having FH. So you do the average of this one, you get mm, FR. Anything else? 